everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Fitness Pro Mentors Podcast. Today, I am here with my good friend, Mr. Dave Friday, who is an entrepreneur, fitness pro, muscle system specialist, exercise, medical exercise specialist, RTS master. Is there anything else that you are? Uh, no, I think you covered it all. That's pretty good. That's enough rolls. Honestly, for all of you, if you've not heard of Dave Frieda, I would encourage you to check out uh, Strategic Muscle Systems, which is his website, and check out his interview because honestly, uh, I really admire you. You're someone I really look up to locally and really respect, so I'm really excited to do this. So thanks for being here with me. Thanks, man. man. I appreciate it. This is great. and look forward to this opportunity. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm excited because... So you, the reason why I want to talk to you is because you've kind of gone through the entire gamut of starting off as an enthusiast into exercise, mm -hmm. muscle, bodybuilding, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You also have kind of gone through this personal transition of where I've seen you to be a relatively quiet, stoic background kind of person mm -hmm. to evolve to get into more of an educator role, to opening your own business, to helping mentor and train people, to go through the whole thing, man. So I mean, if you don't mind, can we just get started in like, how the heck did you get into exercise and training? Sure, man. I mean, uh, my story is a lot like many others. I mean, I started, um, I guess when I was 16, 17, um, first getting into bodybuilding, but I was really into sports. So uh, similar to a lot of people who get into to personal training initially, uh, you like the athletic aspect of it. You like the discipline, all that stuff. Um, so, you know, when I figured out and got out of the delusion that, oh, I'm going to be a, some kind of athlete making money, uh, you fall into another delusion of, oh, I want to I want to work for a sports team because I, I won't be able to make the sports team, but at least I can, you know, be with these guys type thing, right? So, um, so I went to university for kinesiology, um, spent some time there, uh, wanting to be some kind of physical therapist, right? Um, and it was, I'm very grateful during that time, I guess I was, you know, first or second year uh, kinesiology uh, when I went to York, that uh, I just met uh, someone who was uh, associated with Peter, Peter Chason, so, you know, a mentor of both of ours. And, you know, I worked at um, a tennis club. And, you know, I, I was a lot, there's a lot of trainers there, and there's this one guy who worked with Peter. Uh, his name is Bob, Bob Gilmore, so you're familiar with Oh, Bob. yeah, Bob Gilmore. Yeah, and... Uh, a long time. Yeah, so I, I was just uh, kind of like a, ma uh, a maintenance guy there. So I would watch all the trainers. Oh, obviously, I was working out myself. And uh, just soaking in what everybody was doing. And there's just this one guy there who was doing something quite different. And I guess it was so different that he was thinking a lot, right? You can tell. And so being, you know, that type of person, kind of like more of the conscientious side of things, right? It's like I really latched on to that. I'm like, this is so different from what everyone else is doing. This is Bob? This is Bob. Bob Gilmore. And that uh, I'm like, what are you doing, man? I got to figure this out. So, you know, like you... Um, got the RTS material. I think it was like on DVDs and stuff. And like, I immediately went to Oklahoma like as fast as I could. Hadn't even met Peter yet until I was in Oklahoma. So this is probably like 15 years ago. And uh, so I didn't know that. So you met Bob Gilmore. You saw he was doing some different stuff. And then you immediately got on an airplane, went to Oklahoma to meet Tom Purvis. You hadn't even met Peter yet, but Peter was in town. Uh, that's right. Yeah. That's hilarious. That's so hilarious. yeah, so Tom, Tom introduced us. And uh, I was like, yeah, actually, um, yeah. So he's like, Peter, Peter works right, right near it, man. How do you not know this guy? But I already heard of him and stuff from Bob. So, um, yeah. And as I was doing the RTS stuff, like actually just before I went to Oklahoma, um, I was already falling out of favor with what they're teaching in, in university. Right. So as soon as I got that seed, the seed planted in my head from some of this outside uh, traditional education material, I wanted out badly. So, you know, thankfully I completed my degree, like I'm grateful for it and I don't have any uh, regrets about it, but uh, definitely it was a wake up call that, you know, by the second, third year, I was like, I need out of here because, you know, the dreams of being a therapist and all that, you know, nonsense, um, you know, for first pro sports team was just kind of like, eh, it's not what I want to do, right? So completely opened my eyes and uh, just went along from there. Okay, so I got a couple questions for you. So mm -hmm. I know, so I didn't do the university degree thing. 
uh, I was encouraged by Mario Mavridis, whether it was good or not, to not do that and go do all the private education. I'm okay where I'm at now, but hindsight, you know, it could have been a bad scene. You went through that whole kinesiology thing. You mm-hmm. spent all the time and the money. If you could do it all again now, knowing the educational resources that are available to you, would you go through that same four-year process, or would you do a different road? That's... I've thought about that before. That's a tough, I, I don't regret it. So I guess I could say it was necessary at the time. So th- there's, you know, it laid a somewhat of a foundation, right? So, you know, you're learning all this stuff and it's basic memorization, right? But it still helped, you know, I needed to be focused, right? So I don't know about you, but um, I never took to, um, you know, public education very well. So I wasn't really interested in school that much, right? You know, f- you know, high school, I wasn't that great in school. I didn't have the attention. I didn't really care about most of the stuff they're teaching. Uh, so it wasn't until later high school, I'm like, man, I, get a be- I better get it together because I want to get into university. So that's when I started applying myself. And then, you know, the discipline of going to university um, and, you know, applying yourself in that way uh, was definitely helpful. And it laid some you know, some foundation in regards to, okay, what comes up next, right? So it, yeah. it definitely made things easier. But on the other hand, you know, it, was a, it was a big waste of a lot of time and money, right? It's like I could have been working. I could have been, you know, interning somewhere, um, uh, you know, some, with maybe someone like Peter or someone, someone else uh, who I'd learned from uh, later on, right? So uh, yes and no, right? I don't, I don't regret it. I know if Johnny Cook hears me ask this question, he's going to blow up, but I want to ask you this. Yeah, yeah. If someone is a student, like someone comes to want to work at your place, which I want to talk more about, and you're kind of like mentoring, supporting someone through an education process, and they say, hey, Dave, I've got 20 grand. I can go to Oklahoma and do this and spend some money on private education, or I can invest into you and you in a university degree and going the same road you did. Do you have a, a bias? I'm not saying one's right or the other, but what would your answer? Yeah, no, no. My definitely in that situation i would i would not go to the traditional the traditional means right i mean so much so much time it's so much time so much money i mean the stuff that you can like 95% 99% of that stuff is uh i'm sure you guys have covered this in different podcasts it's not applicable to anything like in the real world as far as fitness, right? So yeah. I'm sure you've covered this a lot. It's like people come out of university and they're exercising the exact same way. I was the same way um, yeah. until the RTS stuff, right? So now, on that other note, you said talked about discipline and you talked, because I'm the same as you. And I don't know about any, I mean, I think everyone here is actually kind of the same, but in public <laughs> school and in high school, I was not like, academically anywhere on the totem pole really right um i found that i just didn't connect with the learning style the type of information i didn't find it really pragmatic to any of my goals however if i set a goal in athletics or drumming or anything else i could find a way to figure out how to achieve that goal Mm -hmm. for you i know like you just said that same thing and then when you wanted to get university you were able to find that discipline and i know that glenn one of our mentors 100% will tell everyone that you are the most disciplined person on the planet, in his opinion, because if you want to get something done, I would say that you can focus, you can read, you can figure it out, and by the next day, you will have a profound amount of information and have some wisdom somehow in 24 hours that other people don't. If, uh, I mean, is there any particular things that you've done, done to become more disciplined and to be able to learn faster that's maybe specific to you? Yeah, I mean, that that tendency of, just wanting to learn and soak in information. I mean, that's, I mean, that's just a, a kind of an unlearned part part of, of me, right? So I can't speak for ever, for anyone else. It's just kind of like that's just kind of being super conscientious, right? That's just kind of like it's just an interest and curiosity, right? Now, as far as being disciplined, um, you know, yeah, you know, that's a that's that's a great. Um, that's a great thing, you know, Glenn said about me in, in regards to that, but it's like also disciplined in so many different areas. Like, so what, you know, I like to balance myself a little bit. So I don't like to get so narrow with kind of my discipline in one thing, but, um, definitely if your back's my back's against the wall, um, you know, if, if it's need be put it all in into one area. Right. So, um, yeah, discipline in terms of all, all things in life. Um, uh, I think it's definitely important for sure. So, but this, I want to go deeper into this because yeah. when I think 
Because you've made so many big shifts and full commitments with seemingly no, like no necessary goal at the end. Like my, my wife and I, and I know um, Evelyn and a few others have, like we've done fitness shows where there's like a goal yeah. and you do something to get to that point and then you kind of take a break, not necessarily a hundred percent, but you kind of relax off of it. I remember one time I hadn't talked to you for when I came back and you were like 100% exploring the ketogenic stuff. And I don't want to just narrow that down just like right, right. Dave was straight keto, but you were exploring <laughs> that type of world of like the higher fat world and the fasting. And it wasn't like, like you didn't necessarily have a goal of I want to be leaner. I want this. It's just, you just went all in. And the one thing I remember when we talked about it, you were explaining it to me that really like real, I realized how disciplined were you, you were, was you talked about Roland, who we're going to have on soon, who's awesome as well. Oh, nice. And you were like, yeah, Roland and I are talking about maybe sometime in the next few months going and getting a pizza together. And I was like, in a few months? <laughs> pizza? And I just thought that was like, to me, it was clear that you were like, this is just the way that you do things. Right. So, I mean, perhaps this is a framing thing, but if you have a, a goal or something that you're trying to embody what is that like how do you think about things like are you just all in and you're it's a challenge for you to i'm going to do this type of this way of life consistently or is it just the you know how do you do it oh man i it's it's hard it didn't come naturally right so um it's practice i mean if if you really want to i mean it just comes down to if you really want something right and for me uh the reason why i said balance and kind of and you know uh, discipline in, all, in a lot of areas in life. One of those is health, right? And it's like, if, you, if you're if you're in bodybuilding, you're like an athlete. It's like, there's discipline there in regards to eating, exercise. And now, for me, it's expanded into, you know, mental, emotional health, spiritual, right? So applying myself, and then and also livelihood, right? So your work and your business, right? So um, spreading out as much as I can and having kind of balance in life and applying discipline like i don't i don't discipline is just a practice right um and it does equal freedom right so that's what that's kind of a big quote people say right it's the more discipline the more um you can apply yourself in whatever area in life uh, the more freedom you have right so i got my one last question on this and then we'll switch gears uh -huh. um i was listening to the hubberman podcast and he was talking about this great episode on it was all about like goal setting and he says something that was interesting to me, which to me is true of most people. Okay. I think the exact opposite for you. That, 50 per, that if someone has a fear around something that's yeah. attached to a goal, they are 50% more likely to achieve that goal because they're afraid of the opposite outcome. So like they are afraid of hmm. being overweight and insecure and that's going to lead to X, Y, and Z. Therefore, they commit all in on a particular diet system or a financial goal because they're afraid of being broke or whatnot. Right. And so... To me, you don't seem like someone who's really in, on the outward governed by fear with any of these things. That you have like a goal and you're looking very much at the, the positive, bright side of it. Right. Um, in these things where you are 100% all in, mm -hmm. is fear any part of it for you? Or is it... Actually, it has been a lot of the... Um, from the beginning now, less and less so, right? So uh, I've often thought about this as, you know, uh, everyone kind of grows up, you know, through their childhood with different, uh, you know, how, you know, how they're parented and they're kind of the environment and stuff. And, you know, I did grow up with a lot of fear, right? So high school, uh, all the way up in my twenties, right? Um, uh, there was, there was a part is, okay, I need to be disciplined because, you know, I'm, that's actually quite true. You know, what he was saying is, is a lot of it has to do with, I don't want to deal with these repercussions. I've had to deal with a lot of fear. Uh, I think it's pretty common, right? Yeah. Um, now, the more I've applied discipline in other areas of my life, um, you know, discipline with mindfulness or meditation and, and stuff like that, uh, it's been great because I've been able to work with that fear, right? So, um, yeah, so more so now, maybe in the last five years or so, uh, definitely within the last year or two, there's been a lot of progress in that area is like, I'm kind of not dealing with the same, I'm dealing with the same, like the fear comes up, but I'm dealing with it in kind of a more, like a healthier way, right? So um, it's less and less driven by fear uh, compared to way back when, for sure. Do you think that that level of fear that you had and 
I mean, I would say the same thing too. And I mean, we don't need to get into like childhood stuff because I mean, uh, we could all talk about that if we wanted yeah, to. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I definitely had some challenges as a child and I know there were some divorce things that really forced me to become a different person. Mm -hmm. And I think that now, you know, I was definitely driven by fear in a lot of ways that drove me to spend a lot of money to do a lot of things, to learn a lot, to where mm -hmm. I am now. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there, there's been a metamorphosis where now that fear is gone because I learned how to come through it. Yep. Do you think that for you and anyone like you, because I know you know there are people like Luke and a few other people that have gone through some trials and tribulations in their mm -hmm. life and then have kind of evolved past that. Do you think fear is required for someone to evolve into a new state and a new, a new place, so to speak? Uh, I mean, I think you can speak to this as well. I think it's almost inevitable and it's somewhat necessary. I think trials, you know, when I look back on... Uh, failures and things that I was maybe maybe they're self-made failures maybe in a sense that oh I set a goal or I had an expectation of oh I want to get to a B and C by this point in time in the future and it didn't turn out that way um, you know you can call that a failure and you have to deal with all these fears around that as well um, but I think they're necessary in, in a sense that trials and I mean I've been through a lot of trials and tribulations and when I look back, and I'm sure you're the same way, it's like you're absolutely grateful you went through them because uh, you're a better person for it. And now that's when you look at fear now and you go, well, I don't fear any specific outcome now because yeah. I know it's just going to work out for me either way, <laughs> right? So yeah. all, you know, all the other times it's worked out for me, why should the future be any different, right? So, and that's where you can kind of, once you've worked with that for a while and look what you've done, I mean, that's, that's what you're doing now, right? It's once you work for, a, you just kind of flow through it, right? It's like, I don't fear the future. This is all taken care of. And now yeah. things get magnetized to you, right? In regards to, you know, um, you're not worrying about anything. You just, you just do it, yeah. right? And so I think um, fear and definitely the learning from, you know, mistakes and failure in the past is, is huge. Well, honestly, and I said this to the guys here all the time, but that's with this whole fitness pro mentors thing. Part of the reason why I did it was I thought about what was the scariest thing that I had control over right now with the busyness of my life. What could mm -hmm. be the, the thing that I could do that could throw all my eggs into a basket? And if it blew chunks and failed, right. what it would be okay. And I could learn yeah. from it and evolve from it. Like I went, okay, if it, if it fails, that's fine. But I will figure out from that failure how to move forward. And if it doesn't turn into what do I want to what I want it to, that's fine. I'll, I'll figure that out. Right. Um, and it was this interesting exercise of like, I, I want to see what happens. And I wasn't yeah. really scared if it failed, um, which is kind of fun. Yeah, and so right. I didn't realize we we're going to go this direction. But it, it is interesting to see how like that all evolves. Yeah. I mean, it's 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 worked out for you before when you failed, and it's going to work out for you again. So I mean, once that's taken care of. Everything flows naturally, right? All right, so we got we got a gum, so we got Bob Guy, who puts you on an airplane and sends you to Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. You do RTS mastery. Bob Gilmore. Bob Gilmore. Sorry, uh, yep. Bob. Bo other Bob G. <laughs> There's two Bob Gs near us. Yeah. Uh, so you go do the RTS mastery stuff. Uh, you're all in with that, and then I think the time that I met you, you were at Win Fitness, mm -hmm. um, overseeing that department, and you were in the MAT internship. Mm -hmm. uh, I know you had an accident, which led you to do some personal work with Peter, and you had a really like strong relationship with the range of motion contraction stuff. Tell me more about that. Yeah. Um, so as far as going back to, to working at wind fitness, yeah, yeah. wind fitness and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember, um, uh, you know, joining that company and kind of climbing up the ranks over time. And, uh, you know, RTS was a big part of that. Um, got the, got Peter in for a course there. Um, and you know, it was, pretty much running a department in the sense of being head trainer. Um, yeah, I mean, that was, uh, that was a big part of that. And then, you know, as you, as you, as you said, um, I had a big accident um, where I had my neck broken, it involved an automobile. And uh, that's where I started working with Peter. He was doing um, MAT at the time uh, with me. And man, uh, did I come back quick from that physically, right? So it was, it was pretty crazy, you know, being in the hospital and, um, you know, spending an entire summer with your neck broken at home. Right. Uh, but as soon as I came back, like that was speaking of, I wouldn't call that a failure. That, that is what it is. But being kind of like at that low point in my life, um, was like, I'm so grateful for it in a sense is like everything that happened, um, 
after that in regards to the relationships I made and, and, and all that stuff, right? So uh, I recovered really well and uh, Peter helped me a lot, right? So I love that. You know, I think back to the wind fitness stuff. Yep. And um, I remember, because we were at Persicini's and I was there with Mario and a bunch of other people. We had Peter in for the RTS thing as well. Yep. And Peter Chason, we've talked about him before. He's a late mentor of mine, of uh, ours, and um, one of the best educators ever. He's the only person you could tell the most phallic, disgusting joke to <laughs> to a nun and make them laugh. Like, quite honestly, he could say yeah. crazy things. Like, I was a little doll over there. Uh, yeah, I remember was, that. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's brilliant, and we miss him quite a bit. But we had him in, and I remember at Percy Cheney's thinking that what we had at Percy Cheney's was special, and that I'd never found a place like that. And then I met you and Pam and Scott. That's and right, yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, there's another place like this. Yeah, yeah. This is a bit different. And then that's when we met the TAC guys, and it was the same kind of like thing. Uh, but it was there something magical about that, which I don't see anymore, mm-hmm. where this RTS, or I shouldn't say RTS, but... Um, the methodology comes in mm-hmm. and just kind of revolutionizes everyone's mindset. And then everyone's on the same train together. Yep. Uh, even if they're not at the same level, so to speak, they're all speaking the same language, um, which changed the whole place. And then I remember when you left when going there a couple times to work out and it yep. wasn't, it wasn't the same uh, at you at the helm. Like there was still some remnants of it because um, yep. Pam was there and a few other people, but yep. it kind of like started to fizzle out. Yeah. Um, how did you do that? I mean, one thing I think that really is amazing is that you came in, you had that methodology, you brought Peter in. How did you get the whole team excited about that type of content? Yeah, man, I think it, uh, I didn't have a, I don't think I had a ma- major persuasive effect on anyone other than, um, well, other than just doing the work on people and letting that, letting that show, right? I mean, um, and then again, you know, organizing study groups, um, letting people have their own input and, you know, just building a community, right? And eventually with perseverance um, and not pushing people into anything, right? It's like they start coming on, on board slowly and yeah, generate enough interest, uh, which is kind of cool, you know, study groups and having people all on kind of the same page to uh, bring like an RTS, um, you know, an RTS practical in and, uh, or the, the way the courses were set up back then, right? So uh, yeah, and it was great. and having a great community net, but it was basically just doing, just doing the work with people, right? And letting that show, right? And, and nothing too crazy, not, not uh, you know, not going up to people and then eh, try this out, right? So it was kind of more, you know, just, just being a professional, right? Like instead of the whole, people will forget what you say, but they'll never forget. Yeah, what yeah, they feel. exactly right. Yeah. I love that. Um, I don't know, when you were talking there, I had this memory of us in uh, Oklahoma. I don't yep. remember this. And we, I can't remember what meeting we were down there for. But again, coming back to the stoic, Dave, you, you were down there. You hadn't talked like for like two days. You were just, I think you were <laughs> fasting for two days or something like that. I can't remember at that time. And we went out to Shiki, which is a sushi restaurant there. Okay. And, um, oh my gosh, Kim, the Champlure, whatever her last name was. Yeah, okay. They were playing that word game. It was like a crossword puzzle. Oh, no. Do you remember this? <laughs> yeah, I do. And you were, you were trying to look in, and you just looked at a few words, and you shouted, death, rhino. And everyone just stopped and looked at you. <laughs> yeah. Because it was only two words you saw. I think I won the game. You did win, you did win the game with death, rhino, and then everyone was calling you death, rhino for the rest of the yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Now, um, are you teaching for RTS right now? Um, well, because of, the, because of the pandemic, I mean, things... Um, I never really got that going, right? So uh, my plan is to teach, yep. build that back up again. But it, that was kind of like I have not, haven't put that on the foref- on the front burner, because um, as you know, we just opened up a place uh, this past year and uh, want to get that going yeah, and yeah. Uh, get that flowing, and then yeah, get back to the RTS stuff. But everyone who's doing the RTS instructing and in, you know in this area, you know Sam, shout out to Sam, uh, doing a great job already, right? So. Uh, but yeah, I'd love to get that going eventually. So I want, I would love to talk more about some of the RTS stuff with you mm-hmm. and you opening your business. Mm-hmm. Um, as many people, I mean, shout out Sam Trotta, shout out uh, Dave, awesome RTS, a mastery level guy. Um, when I took RTS mastery, um, it was like a game changer for me. Like it was expensive. It was a huge <laughs> flight. I was 22 when I did the whole thing and I just put all the cash down and went for it. Yeah. It was nuts. But I mean, one thing that I would show to anybody here who's trying to get good at something, uh, definitely invest in or, or try and find someone that you can talk to to explore the information with. And that was you for me, is that, I mean, for, I think every week or once every two weeks, I'd come to your uh, place in Richmond Hill and I would just practice trying to talk through the information 
to make yep. sure I wasn't losing my marbles. Right. Uh, Cause it was just such a dense amount of information, which yeah. I need to tell you, like, just, I mean, if I haven't said this, I'm eternally grateful for that time with you. Oh, likewise, man. It helped me as well. I mean, it, it was great. It's yeah. And I love that. And I, it definitely, I think brought us closer together, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I think everyone here, if you're studying something, find someone who's studying the same stuff, or even if not practice talking through it. Mm -hmm. Now on that note, that's where I want to kind of go with this is that, I know for you, I've heard you do this when we're driving eight hours to Columbus or something like <laughs> that. Um, I, I mentioned that you were a relatively stoic person and quiet person, but I hear you so much more now in the last several years talking and explaining things right. and talking through things. And I don't know for sure, maybe it's just I'm hearing you more, but you have become like an incredible educator and teacher. You can take any idea and you have an incredible way of delivering that information yeah. and telling a story around it. Um, do you have any words of wisdom that have helped you do that? Because I hear you talking about things that are so left field. Okay. And you make it make sense to people, and whether it be spiritual, meditative, whether it's biochemical, whatever it is, you, you can make almost anything make sense. Right. What kind of things have helped you explain things? So okay, far? yeah. So, um, yeah, going back to being quiet, you know, um, you know, way back when, you know, for the last like 20 years or more, right? Which I hope you don't mind me saying that. I don't know. No, no, like that's absolutely true. It's like, um, I just look at it as a kind of a personality type, right? Like if I wasn't into exercise, I'd be a, like a computer programmer, right? Like I never was really that expressive. I just really like thinking and putting things together, right? So uh, that's why teaching, um, you know, I wanted to be an RTS instructor. Like as soon as I could, I remember going to these instructor meetings and being like, you know, uh, man, do I even... I, can I even do this, right? Like, I, I think I know the r information good enough, but it was difficult for me to express it all the time, right? So definitely a lot more difficult than everyone else who was there, right? So, um, yeah, so that was, in, that was intimidating, but um, what's changed over time, and it's been a process, is finding out within the self kind of what it is that stops... Uh, you know, stops me from being expressive, right? So um, again, one of those things is fear and, and working with that, right? Um, and it, it, they're just tendencies that were conditioned um, over a long period of time where, yeah, I'm just, no, I'm just gonna stay quiet and that's, and that's that, right? Where, where you know, uh, being more expressive and interactive, as you know, as, you know, with all the stuff you're doing, that's basically, you know, a lot of your business, right? Is like, extremely rewarding, right? And that uh, I've heard you say on another podcast you had is, you know, and I was this guy, by the way. So, you know, you know a lot of people who have the ability to do this scientific biomechanics exercise stuff, you know, who have the, have the brains for it, but uh, their business is kind of hindered because, you know, they're not expressive. They don't know how to work with people as well, right? So I was in that boat. Right. And, uh, you know, I don't think I was bad with people, but definitely, um, you know, uh, I, that was definitely an area of improvement that I've, I've had to focus on in regards to, okay, what's in, you know, mindfulness kind of meditation, what's in my mind stopping me from doing this. Right. And just, just bringing about awareness. Yeah. Right. And, and, um, awareness is a practice, right. That requires discipline and over time, I, I do. I do believe anyone can condition their brain, condition their mind, in a specific direction that uh, can you can you can create a strength out of a weakness, right? And I absolutely believe that. And it does take time and it does take discipline, but uh, and it's it's it takes patience too, right? So and uh, yeah, that's you that's really it. need that like an anchoring destination. Mm -hmm. I think to have a core, in my opinion, to have a core belief or a you know, place of emotion. For you to go, okay, I need to be at this place. I want to be at this place. I want to open strategic mm -hmm. muscle systems. Mm -hmm. And going, okay, I, for me to be here and to be a teacher, I have to reverse engineer the characteristics, yeah. the traits, and the beliefs that I need to get there. Yeah. And where am I falling short so I can actually work towards being a more competent speaker, being yep. comfortable in front of people, yep. having a sales process. Um, and I, I know that you put the work in, but I mean, and this is where I keep asking these questions to Dave because in my opinion, you've... You've always been brilliant, but your consistent evolution in a direction. I mean, honestly, I said this in a text message to you and I wasn't just, I said, I always think about like, well, what would Dave do <laughs> in certain situations? Yeah. Cause you have such a level head 
uh, not really perturbed by emotion in most situations, at least in my observation, and you figure out what you need to be done, think through it, and you come up with solutions. Right. And it's most, I saw it with your RTS stuff, but it's most evident in your personal development, which I know um, meditation and spirituality has really changed. That introduction into your world has changed a lot from when I met you a decade ago. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, you just turned into this superstar, and I think it's awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, I mean... Um yeah, well, I mean, it's 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 just a uh, disciplined approach to not just kind of one area, right? I mean, um, and and you know, in regards to opening up a place, right? Is like, uh, I, I remember texting you. Um, this is, I think, it was before, or just after I opened it, and it was like, you know, done is what needed to be done, right? In regards to, I was content. Um, I've always been content with the level of business that I had in regards to wherever I was. So whether that was um, renting out space in a gym or uh, prior to that, just working for a gym, um, this kind of this progression towards, um, yeah, I'm always content with those with those places that I was at. But at some point it was like, OK, there's no other option here. Let's get to the next step. Right. I, I can't keep doing this. And this just seems right, right? So, and then, um, yeah, just another level of discipline, right? And uh, okay, so so on that note, I mean, I do remember that text. Where like, done is needed to be done. That when you say that, like, the next step to you, are you saying that in like the okay, I've reached the top of where I'm at now. For me to get to the next level, I have to do this, or was it uh, if I want to do my job better and help more people? Yeah, that's the next step. Hundred percent, right? So, yeah, with that in mind. Um, you know, it's like with where, you know, with where I'm at, there's only so, there's only so much I can do right now. Right. Um, yeah. And yeah, it just comes to a point where, uh, you're like, well, next step and I can't have any fear around it. Cause, and that's the thing is, you know, I think it was Mario who talked about conviction, right. Is like, yeah. um, practicing that conviction and really thinking about, okay, I'm impacting a lot of lives here with all this education that we have. And it's like creating almost a story of like, uh, and visualizing how important is this stuff for people, right? I need to go to the next level here, right? Uh, I can't, you know, I can't be in this situation where I don't have much reach anymore. And this has to happen. And that conviction, um, you, you just, you utilize it once you've, you, once you've practiced it, right? Yeah, it's funny. I, I love the way you're thinking of that because I think so, so, many, so many people I've talked to who want to be entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. they're like, you know, they, they, they want to be that role. Like, I am an entrepreneur. And for them, like, to be an entrepreneur, they have these, these pillars of like, well, to be an entrepreneur, I need to have my own spot. And to be an entrepreneur, but it, it really is, it's not even about entrepreneurship in my opinion. For me, I never wanted to open a gym. It was <laughs> that the place I was at sucked. Right. And we had people that were in need of specific things that place didn't have. Yep. And there were people who were awesome, like Chris, Glenn and Taylor and Eric, yep. that wanted a place to work. Yep. And it was just like, okay, well, done as needed to be done. Yeah, you, yeah, I remember, I remember when you uh, had, basically, you were, you were like in kind of in a corner, like, okay, here's what I'm going to build, right? And, and, you know, you did it a long time ago and you did it young, which is amazing, right? Um, yeah, and, and it's... Uh, I, I got to the same point just a little bit later, right? And, and my vision wasn't exactly the same as that. Yeah, I, I didn't have as much amb ambition in regards to teaching as much as you did. Um, and so things took, you know, things took a little bit longer, but yeah, here we are, right? I, I, didn't, I didn't want to open a place, right? I didn't want all that responsibility, but um, you know, you're ready when you're ready, yeah. right? You know, it's funny about the teaching thing. So I think that I just did a little episode on this, like a solo thing. And for me, the teaching thing was, I think, one of the, like, it was very cool. It helped me make some great connections when I, because I started teaching RTS when I was 24, which is, right. ridic which is yeah. ridiculous. You're the youngest guy. Yeah. And I, I wanted to do it because I thought that was my, like, my trope is that at that time, I thought for me to get to that level of where I would deserve, like, this was my, my, my mindset at the time, for me to deserve to charge Peter style rates. Yep. I was going to have to become a teacher. And it was like, this is my black belt. Yep. Now that I'm a teacher, I'm going to make money now, <laughs> okay. right? I'm going to have clients that'll find me. They'll all know I'm amazing. And it wasn't. Yeah. And I started, I kept pushing the teaching harder and harder because I thought if people saw that I was an RTS teacher, which no one knows what RTS was, that I would turn into business. Right. Um, so I'm very happy that I taught. There were some skills I learned and made some great connections. But at the same time, you know, I, you said I started this business pretty young. I, I think I would have been further along 
if I actually like focused on the nuts and bolts Interesting. of helping people rather than going out and teaching. Right. I, but on the other hand, you probably agree that, I mean, you learned your craft faster yeah. and definitely more uh, in more of a detailed fashion uh, by, by teaching it, right? By forcing yourself to be like, okay, how do I, how do I express this knowledge as clearly as possible, right? Yeah. And, you know, um, you were ahead of the game on that, right? So, well, Glenn and I, we're doing a podcast on Tuesday mm -hmm. called um, Don't Become a Teacher, But Practice Teaching. <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> Because I think that a lot of people are looking at where educators are and they go, I need to be at this role to be successful. And I don't know if that's necessarily true. I think there's some value to that, but yeah. the real value not doesn't come from being a teacher, but it comes from teaching and talking through your information. Yeah. And if you learn Greg Mack's qualitative manual assessment of motor control, <laughs> can you say that clearly and can you explain what that is? If you learn about post activation or um, you know anything, I think that just practice talking. Absolutely, yeah. So, okay, back to your story. We're jumping all over the place, but I sure, love Sure, yeah. yeah. So you're at Wind Fitness, you're the head trainer there. Um, at one point you decide this is not for me and you kind of go out and to do your own thing. Mm -hmm. Um, what was the mindset shift that happened for you and what kind of forced you to, to leave the comfort of a business that had a lot of clients, a lot of people to go and be nomadic? Okay. So I, I'm go I, I got some, yeah, I just got some flashbacks some memories back. Uh, the, my final days at that company is essentially, um, you know, we had that community going, um, and as always, and usually these, these, these big gyms, no matter what it is, is like the company wants to get involved in education, right? So um, as you can imagine, there was kind of a clash there, right? So they weren't, uh, they weren't, they weren't going to invite Tom in, right? Or anything or anybody that, you know, who we're teaching, right? Cause that kind of stuff was over their heads a little bit. Right. right. So um, it, it ended up being education about the most trendy thing, right? So, uh, I forget what it was. It might have been, you know, fascial rolling and all, the, and you know, all this other stuff. And um, the the company wanted an identity out of a specific education, and it was like, okay, so uh, it just it just so happened that it was it was bumping heads between our group, uh, our community, and all the other people that they were trying to influence. Right. right. So um, that's where it was. Time is like, okay, I get a establish my one-on-one -on -one business uh, somewhere else. So that ended up working out of another uh, gym, but kind of for myself, kind of like on a... Uh, oh, yeah. Right? Fitness Connection. Yeah. I forgot you were there. That's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. So um, working there, just bringing my own clients in. Uh, I'm grateful for them for allowing me to do that. I think I was like the only one doing that. Um, and That's so I was right. able to build a business out of, out of there. Um, and again, like you said, just keeping to myself and get and helping people and getting good results and, um, building my building, um, my business on referrals. Right. So not doing too much marketing or anything like that. And, uh, then started building the same community back, uh, back there. Right. So there's a handful of trainers and again, doing it all over again. Right. So how did you open? So talk about the strategic muscle systems, cause it was strategic fitness solutions. Right. Yeah. And then evolved to strategic muscle systems. Is that right? Systems. Yep. Okay. Yep. And then, uh, I, I hope so. Cause I wrote that in the thing. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, now you got to open your own place. So I know done to be done. Yep. But fitness connection to working out of your house, doing your own thing with the sickest basement gym I've ever okay. seen. Honestly, like it's ridiculous. <laughs> right. And then going out to opening your own spot. So, yeah. So, um, basically I, uh, I moved into the Richmond Hill area and essentially, uh, you know, I, I decided, okay, you know what, I'm going to, as kind of a in-between step of ever, if I'm ever going to open a gym, you know, I'm going to open up my own little kind of uh, basement, you know, basement gym. So I was like you, I was like hunting down equipment, all I could, all I could and storing it and figuring, okay, um, what am I going to put in here? And so I equipped this uh, pretty decently sized basement and started bringing my clients uh, to my place, right? Which is kind of um, not very ordinary, but uh, I, it worked for a good two or three years. And uh, but you, had, you had Nautilus Nitro machines in that basement. So you walk it. So <laughs> that was to, not fun. So to get into down. this house, you had to go up a small set of stairs, down a hallway, and then there was like <laughs> these zigzag stairs that you go around a corner and those Nautilus machines are gigantic. Like, yeah. Did you have to tear them right down to every single piece and bring one piece at a time? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> oh well worth it though. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely insane. I mean, you, like, had the, you had the leg press down there too, right? Yep. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's a heavy machine. 40, 45 degree leg press, so yeah. Oh, 45 degree. Do you, I, do you have the Nautilus one? I have too? the Nautilus as well. So now we have two leg presses at our place. Yeah. So all the heavy stuff. That's... <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, brutal. Had, yeah, up so up stairs. and down the stairs, right? So think uh, one rep maxes for 12 hours straight. <laughs> so <laughs> so kind of burnt out. If you want to open your own spot, you got to learn how to disassemble machines and move them. Mm -hmm. That part absolutely sucks. Cool. So let's, um, so I saw some photos of your new place. Oh, and cool. I want to talk, yeah, I mean, I saw a couple, I think I saw them through some photos you may have posted and I, some through Roland and a okay. couple of small things. Um, so tell me, so tell me about it. What's, is it just basically your basement gym and you've just put it on steroids essentially? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, took the, you know, lifted everything out of the basement, put them into a sm uh, bigger space. So instead of, you know, 700 square feet, now we're in about 2000. Nice. So we're able to add equipment as well. Um, and kind of made the, uh, environment, uh, you know, just kind of to the towards the vibration or energy that I kind of wanted, right? So it's kind of got this more tranquil uh, slash kind of more tranquil and medical setting together, right? So you know we got some, um, you know, the color schemes, the plants, right? The fish tank and all that stuff. And um, you always you know, had a sick fish tank. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. So um, yeah, and just kind of made it my own, right? So make it fun and uh, make it the exact kind of. Um, appearance and vibration you want that you're, you're you know you want the environment to fit what your clients want to feel right which i want to talk to you about that okay. i got three big more questions for you all right uh, but really quickly if anyone's watching glenn owen our own mentor decided to write juggernauts uh thank you glenn for commenting i would definitely say i think dave's the juggernaut he's the death rhino and I just get to ask him great questions. Uh, you should have got that tattoo, right? The death run. I tattoo. think you should have. I think it looked great across your back. I don't know. That's a crazy nickname. It's a... Com <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a vibration uh, right there. All right. Okay. So one of the things we've talked to Curtis Clay and many other people about, I had Mark Megna on. We talked about culture is everything. Um, you've talked a lot to me and I've heard you say it just even like in passing, talking about the, like the vibration and you kind of attract what you want based off of your belief system and, and what you want. And I know that um, you and I have had some, some toxic people in our world that we've shared that at that point it was a good vibration and then things have changed and we don't have that same connection. There's really, things have changed a lot. Yep. In your place, you just, just said, well, I wanted to create the right vibration and the right environment. Um, when you're saying that, because uh -huh. I know you have a particular, a particular way in who you are, when you're thinking about creating the vibe, are you trying to create the vibration and the culture that the people you want to come mm -hmm. will like? Or are you thinking about the, this is, this is the Dave vibe or both? Yeah, it's kind of both together, right? I mean, I wanted to create a place that uh, uh, people just get a feel for that. Uh, it's like, oh, this tranquility, I, I can feel comfortable here, right? Rather than, you know, the total opposite uh, vibration that I'm, I'm looking for is like, you know, you know, Metallica playing and you got all this, these black posters all over the place with, you know, and people are... Uh, death Rhino. Right, right. It's a death Rhino fitness, right? <laughs> we don't want that. Um, yeah, so it's like total opposite of like a powerlifting gym, right? It's just trying to, you know, so as a muscle system specialist, right? Same with you. It's like, what kind of clientele are we... Uh, trying to make comfortable here, right? So uh, generally, it's we work. Our, our specialties we can work with anyone, but um, you know our bread and butter is going to be uh, working with people who are older, right? Um, yeah. Who want to feel comfortable in 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 a, in a space, right? So um, that's kind of what I would what I was thinking about. You said something I want to ask you about that. I know the, one of the biggest hurdles I had was when I first started marketing all this stuff was I because of we can work with anybody. Mm -hmm. I kind of market and advertise that I could work with anybody. Mm -hmm. And I've really, even in the tone of all this podcast stuff, I've tried to really talk about like focusing on a particular niche. Yeah. Did you go through any struggles there where you tried to like talk to everybody and you didn't get a lot of referrals, but when you focused a little bit more on a specific group, like these older people, that things started to roll a bit more for you? Or have you always kind of had a little bit of everyone come to see you? Yeah. So to this point, I mean, I haven't done a lot of, uh, I mean, it's coming, right? I haven't done a lot of outward marketing yeah. um, like you have, like in regards to social media and all that stuff. Um, I'm putting that together right now and I've got to, you know, but in regards to in regards to referrals is, yeah, you want to, when you're asking for referrals and talking to your clients about, um, you know, what they like best about what we're, what we're doing, is there anybody um, who anybody you know in your world who would benefit from this stuff is you're definitely thinking about um, how specifically, how specifically that, that person and that demographic is benefiting from your service and, 
and uh, definitely want to attract those people. So uh, what I find that's, you know, what I'm thinking about with social media, social media is tough uh, to attract an older demographic, right? So yeah. uh, think, I've, been, I've been thinking through that. And obviously, um, you know, people in their 60s are not really, you know, going on Instagram too much, right? So no. um, how to, f you know, I'm always thinking about how to fit uh, the message uh, for what form of social media, right? So it looks like you've played played around a lot with that. Honestly, I mean, if you look at the like the statistics, <clears throat> there's a lot more people in like the 45 to 65 category on Facebook. Yeah, and it's kind of like their their stomping ground to go connect with their old friends from high school and stuff That's like right. that. So if you just have the right creative way of very politely offering to give them something, yeah, they'll reach out to you. And it, it's, I mean, I. I think the thing, you know, I was calling the strata biomechanics before with advertising this business. There's no grandpa or grandma <laughs> that's going to be like, I mean, strata internal performance is a terrible business name. You know, muscle systems is a bit more specific because they're like, oh, muscles, I got to, but internal performance, I sound like I'm an internist. I, can, friend. I considered the, using that term too. And, you know, the, the conscientious person in us, right? Our tendency, we, oh, that, that, that sounds awesome to us, but you always got to think about your audience, right? In regards to um what you want to put out there is it is it gonna is it gonna vibrate uh with with what people want and desire right? yeah everyone just calls us strata now which is fine i'd kind yeah, of yeah. go with that but at the same time i mean that's the interesting thing is that i see so many people in our world putting a ton of energy into instagram and it, it's for younger demographics and weight loss or composition based demographics there's a lot of opportunity to advertise and get those types of people um but that's not you know, grandma's not on Instagram. No. And you know what? It's tough to compete, right? So, you know, you know, I thought about this, you know, muscle system specialists, right? It's not, you know, with what we do, how it looks, all this stuff, it's not the, it's not the sexiest thing. No. Right. So it's, you know, I, I kind of have this thought of like, you know, if, if, if there was a bunch of chemists on Instagram, their videos would be like, turn on the, you know, turn on the camera and then uh, turn their back towards it and play with, <laughs> play with, you know, Bunsen burners and stuff. You don't even know what they're seeing, right? Like yeah. that's how boring, uh, our stuff kind of can look to people, right? Yeah, so it's, yeah. um, so <laughs> looking for kind of creative ways and, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about that now in regards to jumping into Instagram mm -hmm. in regards th thinking of creative ways that, okay, let's utilize Instagram. Uh, it's going to be different from what we're going to do with Facebook because of the, the demographics, but how can we, I know a lot of our communities trying to figure this out and are experimenting with different ways, but how can we make this look appealing to a younger demographic? Um, I know we're not going to compete with, you know, a lot of this fat loss stuff and no. powerlifting stuff that's out there because people have attention spans of, you know, 10 seconds or five seconds on their Instagram and uh, we have to capture attention, right? So, um, I mean, have, you seen, have you seen any of the testimonial videos that we've got on the Strata website? Yeah, I have a little bit, yeah. So I, I think that that has been the most, and we haven't done any of them since COVID because I, I want it to look a particular way. We've done about 12 of them. And I would say like most of those are older people who are beat up, who are struggling with specific things. I put them on Instagram. Mm -hmm. All the people that we know um, likes it. And then people who are fans of the business like it. None of them have ever become clients. But what has happened on Instagram is kind of like as an automated thing that's there, They their mom or their grandpa oh, okay. goes you know, they're struggling with something and they go, Oh, I saw this thing. And then they share that video oh, that's with cool. them. But I, I love the, I love the testimonial videos of that. You have a real person, you know, gray hair with, you know, beat up face and they yeah. clearly got a hurt shoulder, the slung shoulder. And they're sitting there like, I went and saw Dave and he did stretches with me <laughs> and he did all these functional. And you're like, don't oh, use it all those buzzwords. But then you overlay it with video of you doing the unsexy, but interesting looking stuff. Okay. Yep. You get this nice juxtaposition of their real words, their real experience saying they've never felt better. And then you can put anything over top of it. It's just like relish. Like it just goes on top of it and it just makes it look a little bit different. That's cool, man. Um, yeah, yeah you, you'll crush it for sure. Anything you do, you'll do great. I'm excited to see it. Well, I'm definitely put, putting my mind on it. So yeah, so again, attention capture, right, is is really our challenge, right? Because... Um, just take your shirt off for a bit. Yeah, right. So yeah, I'm not going to win in that game on Instagram, <laughs> right? So there's enough of that on Instagram. And uh, um, yeah, so it's about just being getting the creative mind going, right? Which is uh, typically not our strong suit, right? In regards to thinking all the time, right? So using our thinking minds are not, is not really gonna help us a lot with, um, you know, uh, creatively looking for solutions, right? 
Now, I would say that there's one thing about you from a business sense that I, I, I don't know if it just comes intuitively to mm-hmm. you or you've put time into it. You've grown your entire business um, from organic referrals, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Like I, I don't, because you haven't really, even seeing your website, you've got a clean website, but I haven't seen you updated a lot. I haven't seen you, you don't do social media really, which is, right. which is great. You've grown your entire business through doing a great job mm-hmm. and having people uh, come to see you. Are you for that? Do you actively try to ask people for referrals or, um, do you just kind of like do a good job and wait for them to send people? Yeah. So, uh, way back, I mean, for, for a long time, I had just been just getting referrals, right? So not even asking for them, but, uh, yeah, more and more recently it's been, why not ask, right? So some of these, you know, some of these things we don't even think about, it's like, why don't want to just ask, do you, know, do you have any friends that you think will benefit from what we're doing here? Like you're excited about the results, right? Yeah. And just planting that seed, you don't even think about it, right? So just planting that seed, um, I, you know, they go home and it might take time, but eventually they come in, right? Um, and uh, yeah, so definitely asking. And then uh, what's powerful that we've learned, you know, in the in the consultation steps of the uh, muscle system course, right, um, is asking for referrals before you even got someone's business, yeah. right? And I've seed, yeah, right. So I've even got referrals, you know, before I've even started working with someone, right? It's awesome. And uh, I'm sure you've, I'm sure you've done a lot of that, right? And uh, it definitely shows people that you have confidence in what you do in that way as well, right? Love so. that. All right, I got one more big question for you. Mm-hmm. I mean, what anyone listening to this will tell I'm a big fan of you. Um, but what I want to ask you is, um, you did, so you went to school, you did the wind fitness thing. Uh, you went to the big commercial gym and you worked in there kind of like I did, like a private commercial gym where there's thousands of members coming in and out. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I've had several young entrepreneur trainers ask me, where should I get started? What should I do? Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you what I had Taylor do. And this is so many years, eight years ago now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, I kind of threw him to the wolves. Mm-hmm. I said, well, you should go work at good life where Mario is. Okay. Uh, because he'll teach you how to sell and he'll teach you how to work with clients. Uh, Cause I think he's really good at like pushing people outside of their comfort zone at the beginning. And it worked well for him. Like okay. he, he like would tell me that he was like, you know, he hated parts of it. Right. <laughs> of course. Mario's got specific ways. Yeah. But at the same time, it really pushed him in his comfort zone to become, yep. I mean, he's our operations manager now. He's a wizard. Oh, amazing. Um, in your opinion, I mean, I think that was a big part of your success story, but if you were to, if you had full autonomy over a trainer who was 100% committed to put the time in to go from fresh off the boat, so to speak, to being in your position, Mm -hmm. is there a timeline of things that you think, I mean, it's obviously very specific to each person. Yeah. But like, do you think someone should do specific certifications? Do you think they should work in a big gym and go through the trial and tribulations of that? Do you think, like, are there some specific pillars that you think are important? all trainers would benefit from? Yeah, I mean, if you're start, I mean, if you're starting up as a trainer, I don't think it hurts to be in a commercial setting. Uh, first, I mean, learn, learn the ropes, um, you know, even before you get fully educated, right? I mean, I think it was, was it Charlie said on your podcast? Someone said in your podcast that, you know, you don't have to be, uh, put so much pressure on yourself to be amazing at first, right? So just get your feet in the water. Yeah. Um, you know, be frustrated, right? Go into a commercial gym, uh, evolve. Um, you know, you're once you're evolving um, and you're getting some education, you know, RTS, right? So probably start with the fundamentals. Absolutely. Um, uh, uh, once you start getting success with your clients and you start evolving, you will get frustrated in that environment. Yeah. Um, and then, then it might be time to move on or um, some opportunities will come up definitely. And you just have to keep your mind open um, to, to what comes up and persevere, right? So uh, it's going to be frustrating. Uh, you're you're, you're going to feel, I don't get paid as much, right? And, and, and you're not going to get the respect from management potentially. Um, but there'll be opportunities coming up if you're doing your job well and you just have faith in that. Right. And that's, I mean, that's the best advice I can give people is just work on your craft, right? Get the, fe- get the most foundational education you can, uh, you can find, right? So plug to RTS, right? That's where, uh, you know, I started and, uh, it branched off to many more things. Once you see, th- see exercise in a specific way, right? Which is, 
uh, learning from the foundations, right? Exercise mechanics and put everything you can in that, get as much as you can from your clients and it'll happen for you. It, you'll evolve and you might then go to a small gym and uh, someone will find you, you'll get, the, uh, you'll get the opportunity. Maybe it's a place like yours where you, know, you get to mentor, right? Anyone who comes in and those are gonna be the people who are gonna be more open to that experience, right? So um, yeah, that's where I'd suggest. The RTS stuff, you know, it's interesting. Talk, so many people in our world, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's a cornerstone <laughs> course and it's not just the exercise mechanics because I think there's a lot of places that are teaching, I mean, they've regurgitated <laughs> a yeah. lot of the exercise mechanics stuff, yeah. but there are definitely like mastery level philosophies that Tom Purvis like that in the RTS Mastery Week, I don't know if he still does it, but there was that entire like first portion of the course that was just on like mastery and mindset and cheesy Darwinian quotes and stuff like that. <laughs> yep. Wayne Dwyer quotes and stuff like that. But the all of those help to really reframe how you think about not just exercise, but really everything. Mm -hmm. And I remember Peter saying to me once, at, we were there in Oklahoma, and he goes, you know, anyone who does this course and excels at it, Typically, if they're in a relationship or a marriage, those typically end. And I was like, <laughs> what? Yeah, he goes, because that. if you excel at this, you can't just excel at knowing the knowledge of the information. You have to modify your mindset. Yep. And that mindset comes with reevaluating yourself. Yep. And that reevaluating yourself, if you were in this place of like, I'm this person and that means I'm afraid of this. You might not even be conscious of what you're afraid of. You draw vibrations, certain people towards you at that time. Yep. And if you evolve past that, that people will get divorced. And I don't want to name any, but at that time he uh -huh. named a bunch of people, which we probably know that their relationships have changed. Their business relationships have changed. And I think yep. it just comes with the territory, <laughs> right? I don't know. Are there any, I've never experienced any other course that shifted how I think about things so much. Yeah. Like I really would say that if all the things I took that one program shifted my mindset enough that I really feel like that between my art, my creative stuff that I like to do and that I could right. do anything. Is there anything, have you taken any courses, programs, or met anybody that's shifted your mindset in the same way that the resistance training specialist has? I mean, definitely, uh, you know, more recently, uh, Greg Mack, right? I mean, yeah. uh, uh, muscle system specialist uh, course, right? I mean, that's kind of, a, fervor, a further uh, application of, of the basic principles you learn in RTS. But I mean, one thing I wanted to point out is um, being a trainer, you know, in a gym is like, how do you even get exposed to RTS? Because I mean, it's, you know, I mean, I have a membership at a gym and I, I talk to the trainers and it's like everyone has like kind of their new, their, their, their new thing, do this, do that. This is kind of like... Um, all the all these gyms are kind of almost promoting some different type of education, right? And it's like, yeah. and they're only exposed to certain types. So I'll just plug RTS again. Is like the reason I was attracted to it is like it was about thinking, right? It was about here's fundamentals, not protocols, and do this and do that and memorize this stuff. It was kind of like um, it's really the only thing out there that helps you think, like practice thinking which just i loved and, and um it's it's people like you right now who are doing their best and doing a great job of it is putting that stuff out there right and it needs to be done because uh yeah people people can't do what they don't know exists right so um yeah it's up to us right it's so it I, fires me up yeah, I know. It gets me fired up too. And it's funny because, I mean, I, I definitely started all of this to try and help trainers make enough money because what pissed me off, why this whole fit, I was doing strata biomechanics, I created the PAP course. That was a lot of fun. I will do more of that. But I was getting pissed off like mm -hmm. mid-COVID because mm -hmm. so many people that we know, uh, and I, I don't want to name it, but a couple of people messaged me. They're like, I'm getting out of the industry. I can't handle oh, this. Uh, I don't know how to get more clients now that people have left. And I was like, mother, there's no, yeah. there's got to, there's a, and so I'm trying to share as much as I can in that world to help people just not to stay in the industry. Yeah, I really, I keep tough, saying that man. every trainer should be able to make $100,000 a year. I think everyone should be able to. Yeah. But what keeps happening is every person I'm talking to who has that skill set to focus on a niche and really, they've all taken RTS. Yeah. <laughs> and that keeps coming up. And I, I didn't mean for this to happen, but it's become an insane plug that even Charlie McMillan talking about manual muscle testing talks about that program. And Greg Mack talks about it. It's just, it's a great mindset rethinking. Yeah. And I, I, I think that you embody that that challenging and that thinking, which I, I admire a lot. Thanks, man. And yeah, and you, you know, you're inspiring a lot of others in the community, including myself. Is like, okay, Brandon's, Brandon's putting it out there. Let's 
let's see what we can do to also do the same thing, right? As, as much as we can, because you know what? We've been in it long enough to see the rewards and we've developed the conviction that, man, this stuff is changing people's lives more than anything else, right? And we have the science to back it up, right? So um, we don't have to make anything up or cloud, cloud what we're doing. It's like, it's right there. And we, we have f total faith and understanding a belief in it. And that's what, that's, what's going to spread. Right. I love it. I mean, yeah, that, that conviction thing, I, every, it seems to me that every year it grows stronger and stronger. Yeah. Like today at my 11 o'clock, um, I have a woman that I've been seeing for 12 years. Mm -hmm. She's 78 years old. She has spondylolisthesis at like, m like six segments, spondylolisthesis at a few segments and scoliosis that if you saw her on the street, you'd go, Oh my gosh. However, from 12 years ago to now, it is a full difference from where she was. She Man. did 30 strict crunches today. Right. And she wanted to do them. And yeah. she did them perfectly. And to me, the fact that 78, all those... If I had one of those spinal conditions, <laughs> I'd be on the floor. And she's in here doing 30 crunches perfectly. It's insane to me. And that, to me, is the, builds the conviction more. Yeah. I mean, if it's in your face like that, and you're applying what you're learning just over time, and it's improving, improving, you're, it's right in front of you every day. And you're like like this is changing lives, right? Like it's insanity, right? And especially another plug for, you know, the muscle system specialist course, um, you know, it's grueling, it's tough, it's detailed. You need to work, you know, you need, you need to be attentive and all that stuff. And it takes a lot of work, but man, the, the stuff that you can leverage, uh, the knowledge that you can leverage in this course, um, you know, it's, it's insane. Right, I mean, it's insane, and, and it, it really is taking the f the foundation, that the foundation stuff that you learn through RTS, and like learning about the nervous system, and it, I mean, I can't express it enough how crazy it is on a daily basis. Yeah, growing that conviction about what you do, right? So there's, yeah, and when you have that conviction, like you said, there's people who wanna who are struggling and they wanna, they they're like, oh man, I want to leave this industry. Like, there's none of that. There's none of that, and you know, once you've once you've seen it enough, it's like I'm going to persevere one way or another. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. Right. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, Dave, I think this is a great place to put a pin in this today. Um, I'm super humbled and honored for your time. Before we wrap this up, because I think you're one of the wisest people. <laughs> I had Chris. I said I had Chris calls when I was younger. He would say that I was the oldest young person. Well, I think you're one of the wisest young people that I know and okay. I love to know, do you have any words of wisdom that you could share with really any level of trainer that might be listening or watching this in the future? Yeah. I mean, um, probably the biggest help to me in regards to overcoming a fear and failing and, uh, overcoming obstacles and having not meeting your own expectations. So I, I, I didn't say this, but I was, I've been, I was really hard on myself, right. When I was young and stuff, uh, getting into this stuff is, um, you know, I think mindfulness, you know, practicing that, you know, uh, meditation, getting to know, um, what's in your way from in, in to be for being a success. So, you know, a lot of our mentors, right? Very successful and uh, knowledgeable. There's, there's degrees of how easy it's been for someone or not, right? So I think what makes a wise person or not is, is, you know, going through a lot of failures and working with yourself and figuring it out, you know, uh, not everything was easy to me, right? And um, not giving up and, and working on your weaknesses, right? Um, and just have that goal, uh, have patience and know that, you know, have the faith that you're going to make it, you're going to make it there, uh, by focusing on, you know, help, helping your weaknesses. And I did that through mindfulness, right. It's in regards to what is it that, how is my mind conditioned where I'm not able to do a, B and C. And then, you know, that's, that's a totally different topic of conversation, yeah. but becoming aware of those things. And I wouldn't say, and, paying attention to them, knowing that, oh, these are just things in your mind that are in my way, right? And learning to work with them. And eventually they're not gonna be in your way anymore, right? So when you just start becoming aware of them, they're not, they're not real. They're just part of your mind that you can, you can decondition, right? Do you mind giving a quick example? Because I think I've heard, I mean, 
Yeah, do you mind giving a quick example on that? Because I think that's such an important thing. Maybe not for yourself, but maybe an exercise or an example of something that a trainer could do to yeah. kind of figure out what roadblocks are in their way and push past it. Yeah, so um, one of the big things of you know mindfulness, and I, I, would, I would recommend people, uh, how, no, it doesn't matter how much success you have or you want to have or you don't have right now, is, is uh, sit, sit and meditate, right? Um, you know, there's different methods of doing it, but I mean, the simplest method is, you know, sit down with no distraction. Uh, it's definitely going to help your attention too, is, you know, for five, 10 minutes, work up to 20 minutes, uh, you know, an hour, two hours, uh, you can work up over this. It's what you'll find. It's the hardest thing to do. It's actually, uh, you know, the Achilles heel of the human mind has said that we want to be engaged in stuff, right? And this is really testing your ability to focus on really what's going on in your mind rather than the things outside of your mind. And that's a huge uh, weapon, I can say, in regards to, okay, what is driving my behavior? And usually it's something we're not very conscious of, right? So, uh, so it, as far as practical advice is uh, build up a meditation routine in, in regards to, and all you have to do is, it's not about calming your mind or anything, it's about just paying attention in silence, what's going on, right? So, um, you know, work on that enough and you'll find that um, it, pays, it pays itself off just doing it. It has nothing to do with trying to obtain something in the future, right? But um, knowing how your mind works and realizing that a lot of your behaviors, a lot of our behaviors, every one of us, uh, actually comes from the unconscious mind and we're not really as much in charge as we think we are, right? Which is crazy. And, you, and that's something that uh, I, found, I, found out my, I found out for myself, right? It's, wow, I can change my unconscious mind by first being aware of it and then um, being able to control your own mind to actually kind of push yourself in the right direction, right? And get, get around your weaknesses, right? Things that you've learned growing up that, don't serve you, right? So I think that's, that's my biggest piece of advice, right? And okay. that's where, I think that's where wisdom comes from, right? And insight, right? Dave, thank you so Thanks much lot, for all of this. Great. I absolutely love this. Honestly, I think Dave is probably one of the best trainers that you've never heard of. So please check out all of his content and keep an eye out because honestly, you're a rock star. I love everything you do. And I look up to you, man. I appreciate Likewise, it Likewise, man. No, this has been great. Everyone, it. Fitness Pro Mentors podcast. Check out Strategic Muscle Systems. Dave Friday, thank you again, man. Thanks a lot, man.